And now the Dakota Marker rivalry moves south on the biggest stage imaginable. Who's ready to win a national championship? Jay Walker, we are about to find out. And with all that history you just mentioned, no game in the history of these schools is bigger than the one they're about to play right now. North Dakota State receives the kick. Jack Rabbits won the coin toss and deferred. And so our first look at Cam Miller, who has championship game experience. We know all about it, but got to play better than what we saw the last time out, at least through the air in the semifinal win. Yeah, struggled their last time on the field. Only completed one pass out of 12. He did rush for 100-plus yards, so he can be a dual-threat guy. But if he doesn't come out and play much better than that, then the Bison will be in for a long day offensively. 13-1 and one versus 12-2. and two. two great rivals in the Missouri Valley Football Conference. We are ready to roll in Frisco. Love it. Power formation right away from North Dakota State, letting you know their game plan. Kobe Johnson gets the handoff. He will bounce it outside. You just talked about it. He does it there for a gain of a couple. Uh, how about the scouting report? We saw Coach Stiglmeyer say, hey, you know what? We're going to make them bounce the power run game to the outside. North Dakota State did that. South Dakota State was all over it. But anytime you can make North Dakota State struggle to get yardage that hard, that's a good sign for this Jackrabbit defense. Five-yard pickup on first down. Tamaric Williams is also healthy and will play today, we are told. We saw him in pregame warm-ups. He was injured in the quarterfinals with an ankle issue. Johnson remains on the field and over the right side, rumbles ahead for a two-yard pickup, and just like that, it's third down. And you saw a great play there by Caleb Sanders, number 99, one of the best interior defensive linemen in all of FCS football. Special talent, wins his one-on-one -on -one matchups most of the time. How important is it for both sides to get off to a good start today, given all that's on the line? Critical. T.K. Marshall, the running back on third down. Mathis aligns in the slot. Quarterback run. Miller straight ahead, and I don't think so. A gain of one. And just like that, it's fourth down. The stop by Tucker Large. The nation's number one rushing defense just showed you why. They were down a man in terms of schematically, but they found a way to get one extra guy to make a great play. Coming up from the secondary was Tucker Large. The walk-on making a big play early in this game to stop the Bison. It is a great football name, right? Tucker Lard. As a safety <laughs> coming in for run support help. Yankee back deep to receive. A fair catch called for and made at the 14, a punt of 50 yards. And now our first look at South Dakota State and Mark Gronowski. Played in this game back in the spring of 2021, was injured in the first quarter, went out against Sam Houston State. Stayed on the field, watched his teammates before they ultimately lost by two in a comeback win by Sam Houston. And now you have to think this moment has to be big for him. Absolutely. He was a different quarterback back then. He came in as a pure running quarterback, has developed as a very effective passer that can run the ball extremely hard. Empty backfield on first down for the Jackrabbits. Gronowski to the air. Has his tight end, and that's a first down. Tucker Craft is healthy. He picks up 12 and a good start for the Jacks. And Tucker Craft is that dude, and I like it. Get the ball to your best playmaker right away. This offense goes with the creativity of Tucker Craft. You see here he's ranked for the NFL draft. Number two, we saw him, Roy. He can Woo. route. He's big. He's got the complete package. They're going to need him to make some plays today. Did not play in the first meeting. He turned down multiple NIL offers to go up to the FBS level in the offseason. Look at this formation, schematically. Three tight ends on the field. And they'll hand it off to Isaiah Davis, his first carry. Big yardage on the ground. A gain of 11, that'll move the chains again. When you have so many tight ends, the defense doesn't know where to declare the strength. So everybody's thinking they follow in the fullback with good vision by Isaiah Davis. Scouting report on Davis, great after contact. Likes to bounce off of defenders. You have to make sure you play him through the whistle and bring him to the ground because when you think you've got him and just put a hit on him, he can stay on his feet and pick up yards. 
22 and blue and white, one to watch. The hammer in the backfield for South Dakota State. Another touch, weaving his way through the A gap, crossing the 43 yard gain, the stop by Luke Wirtz, who's now healthy for the Bison. And they're going to need him to stay active from that inside linebacker position. You know, something you'll see about both these teams when they're going, they win first downs. A play like that was a boring play. First down, but it picked up positive yardage. Great football teams win first down. Although it was a minimal game, you'll take that if you're South Dakota State. Jack Rabbits winning the Missouri Valley Football Conference Championship outright this season. Play action, Gronowski, they'll swing it back Great to job. Isaiah Davis. That's a first down and a lot more. Usher down crossing the 45. Gain of 15 yards, and here come the Jack Rabbits. Great job of timing by the offensive line of setting up this play. Watch the slips. They think it's a run play, but no, they sell it, come back to where they fake the run, and then the rest is all Isaiah Davis doing a great job getting downfield. But the timing of that play was fantastic for the Jackrabbits. Three and out for the Bison on their first possession. SDSU already in plus territory on their first touch. Johnson and Davis in the backfield, a power look. And Amar Johnson, the Wildcat quarterback with a carry. He boats across the 40. You know, gentlemen, I spoke to Isaiah Davis on the field before the kick, and I asked him, where'd you get your speed from? He said, my mom was a track star, my dad a defensive lineman. He's a blend of both. <laughs> 1,300 yards on the season. He looks the part. I, I get that. You know, the D lineman, you know, that's where you can get the grit from, the power, the, the able to stay on your feet. And the track, you need the speed. Hey, mom was fast. Let's go. Second down and four. Johnson and Davis remain on the field. They'll shift back to a Wildcat set. Isaiah Davis this time gets the snap. A little trick erasion. Gronowski has it. Eves one deep. North Dakota State ready and waiting. Jake Yonke, the intended receiver. And that's schematically good job by Zach Lohan, the offensive coordinator. When you win on first down and you pick up six yards, second down becomes a play around date. Still third and manageable. You have to be thinking this is two down territory for the Jackrabbits. And I'm going downhill. I'm going downhill with Isaiah Davis, letting him run the football. See if we can get four yards. If it comes up a little bit short, you're going for it on fourth down. This is the championship. Davis steps up. And he'll get the snap again. A stutter step. Helmet comes off. Thought it was a football for a minute. Right at the line to gain. And let's see. Love it. Give the ball to your guys to get you here. You know, two down territory. You know they're not going to get them for a negative yardage play. Look at the patience and the way to shift. And we said he could pick up the yardage running the football. Isaiah Davis showing you that yards after contact bounce we talked about. Kayser was the NDSU player who lost his helmet. Will Mostart slow to get up. We are seeing Eli Mostart, his twin brother, on the field today as well. And Will has been... A bit banged up recently. But Eli returning is a big story for NDSU. It wasn't up for the first down. And Jay, they did have three weeks off since the semifinal victory, right? So time to throw in some wrinkles and using some more Wildcat here on this first possession. Yeah, and, you know, they like to do that creatively. When you talk to their offensive staff, they said, we've got some personnel things we want to try. And the ability to do that is because of Tucker Craft. I mean, a tight end that's going to get that much attention. And then you throw in Zach Hines, who's also a really good tight end, to go along with Davis. When you can spread a defense out that far and, wonder, and know you're going to win the one-on-one -on -one matchups, pretty hard to game plan. And I think they've done a good job of causing some confusion versus this North Dakota State defense. Craft a weapon. Hines was banged up yesterday during walkthrough somehow. We expect to see him today, but not at 100%, which is something for us to watch. How about the atmosphere? It is a packed house here at Toyota Stadium. It's Smart been fantastic. Number 26 in North Dakota State lost his helmet. He must remain out for one game to play. You know what case. I love? It's never quiet. Because when one team has a ball, the other team's making noise. So right now, South Dakota State has a ball. The Bison fans are going to make some noise and make it uncomfortable. We saw the same thing. Electric atmosphere. Mark Johnson 
the running back. Five minutes in, the FCS National Championship. Jaden Yonke makes a man miss. That's a first down at the 15. A gain of 17 yards. We're going to introduce America to one of the Yonke twins there. This is Jaden Yonke. He's got a twin brother, Jackson, on the field. But you see, big, tall guys. This team is extremely tall. They go 6'3", 210 pounds apiece, along with the big tight ends, a big offensive unit. You cannot arm tackle big wide receivers. Jaden has the smaller neck compared to Jackson. He has put up bigger numbers so far this season. Davis back on the field at running back. Jack's impressive on their opening possession. Davis with a burst. Davis with a touchdown. Yonke, a fantastic block. That was Jaden from 16 yards out to help spring Isaiah Davis. What an impressive drive by South Dakota State, the number one team in FCS football, showing you how they can get it done. Follow the blocks. Good job, like you said, by Yonke there. And the rest was Isaiah Davis with fantastic vision to get into the end zone. Jackrabbits have won the last three matchups with their rivals from the north. Never beaten the Bison in postseason play. Hunter Dustman's extra point is good. 7-0, our new score. Six minutes in here in Frisco, Jay. Fantastic start for the Jackrabbits. They're not afraid of the Bison. Well, the pregame tradition of announcing the starters before they exit the locker room onto the playing surface gives you goosebumps watching that a little bit. I mean, absolutely. He's a mild manner guy throughout the week. Probably the most cordial coach we've ever dealt with. You know, going into a game, there's some great guys in the business, but he's a true quality individual, understands what's here, doesn't get too high, get too low, but they say in that locker room, he knows how to fire up the boys, and obviously they came out ready to play. Rajon Nelson, Jalen Bussey back deep to receive the Hunter Dustman kick. And a fair catch made for stepping out of bounds. Take me back to the touchdown, Jack. Yeah, and I love the way they set this up schematically. First, they're going to put a big wide receiver in the backfield. That's Yonke. But then, watch him come around, seal the edge, and act as a lead blocker. Great job when you got six foot three inch wide receivers right there. That's the block. That sprung them. Team effort. Team effort by the Jackrabbits offensively. You feel the pressure shifting sides as you see Davis's numbers so far. What does Cam Miller need to do? Because we saw NDSU strictly on the ground on that first possession. Yeah, he's got to get some confidence that, Coach, I can throw the ball. You can't run against the number one rushing defense in the country. You need the quarterback to make some plays with his arm first, preferably, and then the legs. To Merrick Williams, the running back. He'll get the swing pass, and it is incomplete. Well, it was broken up. There was penetration by Dyshawn Gales. And this is that throw. It's got to come out sooner. They're playing a cornerback that's waiting out in the soft zone. Put it on them. Very fortunate that ball was not intercepted. The passing game's all about rhythm. You know, you have to have the rhythm. There's a reason why quarterbacks take drop backs so guys can get downfield. And it seems like North Dakota State has lost their rhythm in the passing game. Johnson with a touch, Kobe Johnson, and the first first down of the game for North Dakota State, and a gain of 14 yards, the tackle by Freeman. Well, you clog up the A-gaps, and we talk about in the open, they can run on the perimeter. Look at the great job of sealing downfield by the offensive line. Nash Jensen, number 66 from his guard position, showing you why they've been able to win championships running the football better than most. Talked to offensive coordinator Tyler Roll this week, and he said, Kobe Johnson, huge part of our leadership on this team and this unit this year, suffered a dislocated finger against Incarnate Word in the semifinal victory in the comeback. A flea flicker here. Miller with time, floats one deep. Double cover. The catch. Catch. Zach Mathis with a first down. Wow, what a catch. 
26-yard gain, Jay, and Mathis at 6-6, pinpointing the football high. That's what you do, and that's how you help out your quarterback that's struggling a little bit. Probably should have gone someplace else with the football. The Jackrabbit defense had this sniffed out. Look at the blue jerseys retreat. They get in retreat position. They've got one over the top, one deep. But this is a fantastic individual effort by Zach Mathis where this team really needed a big play. From the 35. Seven minutes in, play action for Miller. The man in the flats, it caught by Stuffle. Stopped after a gain of nine, but Cam Miller finding a rhythm all of a sudden. That's what they need in North Dakota State, showing you the heart of a champion. They took the blow from South Dakota State. Now their offense is starting to find a way to move the football down the field, and they're trying to get Cam Miller going. Consecutive completions for the junior quarterback out of Iowa. Head coach Matt Ince has never lost a game in Frisco. In fact, NDSU was a perfect 9-0 here. Trying to make it 10 championships in 12 years. Win today does that second and two. Here's Williams again. Ginger run to the right side. No gain on the play. Tervere met him at the line. And I actually like that play call. Second and short. You got to show you're going to get to that A gap. Try and get that A gap power. But South Dakota State still not budging. Defending that A gap. Trying to force the Bison to have to bounce it outside. This is going to be a good play right here. Oh, this is going to be a good play. If you're North Dakota State, you line up with your power formation. You bring it. And if you're South Dakota State, you prepare for that power that's coming at you. Let's see who wins the battle. Don't back down. Either team. Williams, the running back. Play action. They'll fake the handoff. And the pass is caught by Joe Stumble. Touchdown. His second touchdown grab of the season. It took a while to develop, but it worked out perfectly for the Bison. It was not looking good early on. I thought they backed down a little bit going with the play action, but high risk, high reward play there. And Stuffle does a great job of securing the football for the catch there. Pretty good coverage in the secondary. Wow, what a gutsy play call. Griffin Crosa on for the extra point. There was a problem with the hold, and it still got through. We're tied at seven. Steindorf somehow corralled the snap. And one more look at the touchdown. Yeah, they, they went for it there. They were rewarded with the touchdown. North Dakota State telling you, SDSU, we know who you are. Let's go. Run in any other sport you can come up with. Yeah, to be quite honest, I don't know if it's been matched. I mean, we were scratching our heads trying to figure out there has to be one out there that's been as dominant, but on paper, number wise, I, I don't see it. I, I don't see it. Good job of the animation. I had to figure it out when they said the, the 233 yards per game hiking. That was a hiking portion. Yeah, what it's a, a hiking part. What a hiking you need your legs. And to run the football, you need your legs. So. There we go. <laughs> Good job by the graphic. Makes a lot of sense, but. I think those numbers, they're playing probably their biggest foe, their biggest, their worst matchup since they've had this little run. Will Cardinal, a squib kick. Yankee tries to field it, finally does at the eight. Jump backwards and a hard hit at the seven-yard line. Logan Kopp laid the lumber. Good play by the special teams here. And this ball just short hops him. At least to kind of let it go. You want to feel that cleanly. But imagine this. How do you slow down a team that just looks so impressive in their first drive? You make them go the length of the football field. Special teams comes up with a big play. And they've got the Jackrabbits on their heels. How about Cam Miller complete those last three passes for 62 yards and the touchdown. That's got to do a world of good for his confidence. Yeah, he needs that confidence to get it going. Already off to a better start than he was last time we saw him on the field. But now it's jackrabbit offense time. Radowski designed quarterback run. Upended at the 10, a gain of two. Heisman met him near the line, a short pickup. Good job crowd the line of scrimmage and also getting some secondary support. I saw number 25, Michael Tutsi in there as well, coming up from that free safety position, trying to give some run help, letting you know how much they respect 
this Jackrabbit offensive rushing attack. Could we have had a better start here in Frisco today? Oh, as a football fan, you love it. Two teams going at it. Heavyweight battle, which we wanted to see. Great fan bases, electric environment. Kirk told us during the last break, describing just how loud it is. Johnson stripped up. He's going to lose a couple, and just like that, it's third down and long. You know, they start making them uncomfortable. Once you start losing first down, then you respect the interior run defense and look at the white jerseys just surrounding the football, giving South Dakota State a version of their own medicine, making them bounce the ball and able to come up and make the tackles. Luke works. Gronowski shifting backwards, gets it to Johnson. Double teamed and driven down, no gain. Three and out for South Dakota State. And the strength of South Dakota State on offense is the offensive line. They don't really worry about their quarterback getting pressured too much because they've been able to protect them all season. Well, obvious pass situation. The defensive line for North Dakota State disrupted the timing. Forced a short completion, which is bringing up a punt. Hunter Dustman on for SDSU. Jaden Price, deep for the Bison. Should have outstanding field position. And the tumbler takes an SDSU bounce. Price retreats and goes down to the 31. On a 52 yards, a loss of six on the return. The Bison get it back here in Frisco after this. 12 passes in the Fargo Dome back in mid-October. Kobe Johnson, the running back. Quick toss back his way. He's going to lose three yards. Good news for South Dakota State. Caleb Sanders is back in the game. He missed that entire last series. He's limping off the field right now. You uh -oh. see him. I was watching him, guys. He's on one leg right now, and he tried to give it a go, and he is huge for this defense. Their best interior defensive lineman. He's a state champion wrestler from Iowa. That's Texas football, Indiana hoops, and wins the gravity and the low center type of moves from the defensive line. He's not a big guy, but always wins his matchup getting low, and this is a monster loss for them. Sean Gales made that last TFL, second and 14 for NDSU. Miller escapes, and he's got a crease. Brought down short of the 40. That's a gain of eight, third and respectable coming up. And running the football there, that's the dual threat portion of it there. And although he struggled last time on the field, throwing the football, he ran effective, so that's what they need up. But going back to that Caleb Sanders, man, I mean, as a quarterback, the one thing you hate is pressure up the middle. So when a guy like Caleb Sanders that always wins his one-on-one -on -one matchup, instant pressure up the middle, oh, you hate to see that one. That's a huge blow for South Dakota State's defense. Third down and six. Number three to play in the first quarter. Time for Miller. He'll step up and deliver a shot well high. And incomplete, looking for Jake Lippy. That's the one that's the head scratch. Nice pocket, plenty of time. Miscommunication. When you've got that much time, you have to be on the same page with your receiving core. Not the type of throw decision that you want coming from the quarterback. Jay, with Sanders out, at some point, does North Dakota State identify that and say, okay, the ball. here we come right up the middle? They got power. I think they will make that adjustment for sure. Hayden Steindorf, punter for NDSU. Hayden Yonke back deep to receive for the Jacks. And a wobbler floats to the 22. Yonke with a full head of steam, and he's met with plenty of resistance. One of 39 yards, a return of one. We remind you, the NCAA championship coverage continues. The Men's and Women's Indoor Track and Field Championship. It's on March 10th and March 11th. For more information, visit NCAA.com, the home for all 90 NCAA championships. Is this game living up to what we thought? I mean, coming in, we thought that South Dakota State said, we're better than the Bison. But the only chance a lot of people thought 
North Dakota State had was they've never lost in Frisco. And so right when you think South Dakota State's going to run through them up and down the field, Matt Ince and the Bison show you, hey, this is our house. Nobody's won more in this stadium than they have. Walkthroughs yesterday, NDSU looked quite comfortable and in very familiar settings on the practice fields. Isaiah Davis bolting ahead. Nine-yard pickup on first down. Look at this. The guy's running in between up the middle. Great job of sealing by Evan Bunks and the guard. And then you also throw in their best offensive lineman, Mason McCormick. Big nasty clearing this room for Isaiah Davis. That's why I love working with former quarterbacks because you guys always praise the tight ends and the offensive linemen. Oh, you know I, where the bread's buttered. Oh, yeah. Receivers just catch balls. People that protect and stop you from getting hit have a special place in your heart. Davis deep handoff. Davis tripped up and he didn't get there. No gain on the play and it'll be third down and short. Now Kubitz Darted through the line of scrimmage at the last minute and 36 got there in time. Big play for Coach Sticks. SDSU, Jack Rabbits. Boy, he was smiling all day yesterday and walked through again pregame earlier this morning. Calls himself the world's most boring coach. He loves to garden, loves to hang out with the grandkids, but he is far from boring. Johnson and Davis in the backfield, right behind Gronowski. And a timeout called by the veteran quarterback. Well, it's about that time. Coming up tomorrow night, 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific over on ESPN. Max Duggan at TCU take on Stetson Bennett and the defending national champion, Georgia Bulldogs. It is the college football playoff national championship game presented by AT&T. And the question resides, can the Horn Frogs pull off another upset? And listen, we're here in Frisco, a stone's throw from Fort Worth. You saw the TCU bookstore. They lining up around the corner to get in and get the merchandise and with good reason. 13 wins this year. Incredible. Sonny Dykes, year number one. Sensational. Quentin Johnston, one of the top receivers in the country. And then the semifinal upset against Michigan. Yeah, I mean, everybody's betting against them but them. I mean, TCU knows within that locker room, they think they can play with anybody. And you give me a quarterback that's playing hot and you can beat anybody. So you can Go ahead and crown UGA champions if you want to, but I think the Horn Frogs are going to have something to say about it. I think I want to. Third down, out of the timeout. Gronowski, a patient run, and I believe he got there. That'll be enough for a first down after a gain of two. And those are one of those plays where I, I measure who's controlling the line of scrimmage. Third and one, one-yard game. You're a good running football team. You should be able to pick it up rather easily. But look how hard they had to work just to get that yard. Letting you know that North Dakota State, their defensive line starting to get a little bit firm against the run, making some adjustments, maybe having Eli Mostart back in the lineup starting to improve this play. an intense rivalry built on respect. These two foes quite familiar with each other. First down pass is caught. Yankee has it into NDSU territory. A gain of 18 more. And this is what we talked about when they said the formation, they were going to look for a matchup. I mean, they've got, look at the tight ends in there. Yankee's almost another tight end. He lined up as a tight end. And with that formation, they just didn't know who to defend, what the strength was. That's why Yankee was able to get so wide open. 15 minutes in, we are tied at seven. And what a start here in Frisco, Texas. The NCAA FCS Championship. It's a sensational start and a good start for the Jackrabbits. The FCS Championship continues after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Ben, Jay, you down? Uh, I'm a pass on the rabbit there, but oh boy, they know how to make this track and I, I actually joined the bison tracker there over 8,500 folks you can track where they're coming from all over the country. Pretty phenomenal and the team needs it. 
dynasty of NDSU, upstart South Dakota State, search of their first national championship. They're well represented. Davis straight ahead. And hey, Clark, down on the sidelines, I mean, it's loud. You talked about that, but SDSU brought plenty of fans down here. They'll balance out the Bison, right? Loud is an understatement. When you think about this crowd, I mean, normally when NDSU plays in this game, it's quiet when they're on offense. And you saw the Bison tracker, but guess what? The people from the South brought it, and they came in droves. And I'll tell you what, I've watched this game in the past. Normally, North Dakota State swallows this stadium. Not so fast today. It's a blue out on the other side. Absolutely right. Never quiet. And that's the way it should be. Neutral side game, when another team has the ball, make some noise, make them uncomfortable. Now Ski will keep it on second and nine, twisting and turning, plus territory, a three-yard gain. The stop by Garrett. It'll be third down for the Jacks. And starting to notice, we saw it earlier, the Bison starting to control the line of scrimmage against the running attack of South Dakota State. Good signs now. In this obvious passing situation, keep an eye on number 99, Spencer Wagey. Defensive end for North Dakota State. The only senior on that D-line, the guy that makes it go. Got 19 TFLs this season, does Wagey. Johnson and Davis in the backfield. Davis open, almost caught that pass in self-defense. It's enough for a first down and a gain of 13. You talk about having timing perfect coming out of the backfield. Just an arrow route, releases the ball. The defender tried to undercut the throw. Not able to get there in time and bang, bang play. Just enough on the throw to pick up the first down. 21st catch of the season. Number 22, Isaiah Davis. The rushing numbers have been astronomical. Tied at seven, SDSU on the move though. Is this the point where we'll see Tucker Kraft again? Motions over to the slot instead. Amar Johnson, big gainer. Johnson, up and running, and that's a touchdown. From 32 yards out. this for taking control of the line of scrimmage the blue jerseys get a body on the body great job downfield by Zach Hines the tight end to seal the deal to escort Johnson into the end zone Jack Rabbits scored 77 yards just eight plays less than five off the clock Dustman on for the point after Jack Rabbits back in front by a touchdown. The key to big runs, downfield blocking. You see guys leading the runner into the end zone. That's the way you draw it up if you're South Dakota State as they regain the lead. Week. Every coach, every player said this is how it should be. Waiting at the top, the Bison, the dynasty. They wanted to take out the all-time best program in FCS history in this kind of atmosphere, in this kind of game. And right now, they've been off to an impressive start, Jack. You know, what we mentioned, you know, when you've beaten a team three times before, you know, every the last three times you played them, they've won. However, everybody's saying, well, it's the postseason. This is the Bison time of year. South Dakota State showing they're going to put up a fight. They're going to make North Dakota State come take it from them, the number one team in the country. Dustman sends it right into the sun to Raja Nelson. Nelson now healthy. Nelson with a burst. And upended at the 30. Decent return. Late penalty marker comes in from the Southern Conference officiating crew. Led by Jeff Page. It's been a very clean game so far. I haven't seen the penalties out there. They've let them play. Big one comes up on special teams. And it's big because field position is so big. I mean, every yard we've seen these defenses have the ability to tighten up. Turn holding 21 in the receiving team. 10 yard penalty being forced from the 30 yard line. First down. Jalen Bussey, guilty party, first penalty of the afternoon. Just underway in our second quarter. Bison get it back. 
Cam Miller, an impressive start, and let's see what the offense yeah. looks like. And I want to see the offensive line take over. You know, I'm talking about Cody Mock. You know, we talk about the star power in this game. Mock is a star at left tackle. He'll be a top two-round guy in the NFL draft this upcoming year. He's the guy that makes him go, and he's got to be verbal. He's got to give the vocal leadership. Hey, we are going to force feed this run game to try and establish that we're going to be able to run the football. Diamond formation, Cody Mouth, the starting left tackle. Arrived in Fargo as a walk-on as a tight end. Kobe Johnson weaving his way for a first down, and the ball popped out. Who jumped on it? 14-yard gain, and let's see South Dakota State. They have it. It's going to be Beanham. The cornerback, number seven, had a really good chance of coming away with that football. Was he strong enough to hold on to it? The answer is yes. Our first turnover. Unfortunate turn of events for the Bison. Bison, as they come up with an explosive running play, but towards the end of the run, Johnson, oh, ball gets stripped. That's a good job of tackling there. Puts it on the ground, and the blue jerseys get to it in a hurry. a side swipe that ripped the ball loose. Gale's involved in that sequence. He's been active today defensively. A rare fumble for Kobe Johnson. How about this starting field position now for the Jacks? Tight up the chin strap right now if you're North Dakota State on defense. You need to make a stop right now against this Jackrabbit offense. He'll fake it to Davis, time Gronowski, swatted down at the line. It'll be second and ten off the deflection. And the penetration was there by the front four for NDSU. It looked like Gronowski was trying to go to Tucker Kraft. Kind of free release and was open, crossing the defense. North Dakota State fortunate they were able to bat that ball at the line of scrimmage. Now, now here's a quandary. If you throw the ball on first down you, and it's incomplete, you come back and throw it on second again. Davis, a touch, and a short game. One yard on the play, and that's it. And I was answering the question. I'm kind of the guy like, hey, if you throw it on first and don't get it, you got to come back and throw it. You're putting the ball in your quarterback's hands for that three-down series. And right now, obvious pass situation. You're going to need Gronowski to get a big pass for you. Yankee twins on the field. Landon Wolf as well. Three wide receivers set after that last stop by Courtney Eubanks. And I'm identifying where does Tucker Kraft break the huddle. They're lining him up in the slot. So he's in the slot there in a dangerous position for you. They'll move him in, try to find him a clean release. Gronowski with time. All afternoon, heaves it. Yonke has it. That's enough for a first down. Jaden Yonke picks up 16 on third and 10. You know what? It starts with the protection. Look at this offensive line. That's a clean pocket. You've got a lot of bodies around you. He's able to go through one, two progressions before he finds Yonke open in the middle of the field. Give credit to the guys up front protecting their quarterback. Mark Gronowski, seven for nine to start. A gain of 91 yards passing, rather, after that last gain of 16. out all of last season he remained active on the sidelines during games he wore the headset here all the communication happening wide open and that's a touchdown Jackson Yonke from 18 yards out and Mark Ranowski dropping dimes in this championship setting I've been waiting to say it Wonder Twin Powers activate we saw Jaden make a number of big catches and his twin brother Jackson Shows up on the outside, nice little double move on the stutter go. Loses Destin Talbert for the easy score. And the Jackrabbits make the Bison pay for the fumble. Well, it is actually Jackson Yankee that has more yards and more touchdown grabs this season compared to Jaden, his twin brother. 
They both have been extremely productive, but how about the play design and the execution? Super clean in this sequence. So just throw it on the money. Get so wide open where I can drop it down the chimney like Santa Claus giving gifts. For South Dakota State quarterback Mark Gronowski, football is a family affair. His dad, Ray, played quarterback at Drake University and started teaching him the position as early as first grade. But his drive to be great also comes from his 25-year-old brother, Ryan. Ryan has special needs and absolutely loves the game of football. Mark told me Ryan is the most loving and loyal older brother anyone could ask for. He's an inspiration, has given him great perspective and patience in life. And this year, Ryan was a member of Team Illinois and their flag football squad, which won gold at the Special Olympics down at the Disney Wide World of Sports. He even got to meet Tim Tebow. Ryan plays wide receiver, linebacker, quarterback, of course, like everyone else in the family. I got to meet this young man before the game. He is absolutely terrific. And Roy, you know, I have a son with special needs, 15-year-old Grayson, and watching him play sports is a beautiful thing for me. It gives him confidence, and that team approach he carries with him in every aspect of life because of sports, much like Ryan. Yeah, beautifully said, not to mention you guys carving up the slopes in Park City, Utah last month, and what a great story. And a feel good stories you saw Brian there in the stands showing you the heart and showing the love to his younger brother Mark Ranowski who is just playing sensational football this season Jack. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And hats off to Carp. I mean, Carp, great job explaining that story to everybody. And that's a really feel good story about college football. You got to keep in mind, you never know what's going to motivate and spark somebody for greatness in life. And if your inspiration comes from a source like your brother, the family, hats off to that young man and his family. By the way, Gronowski's a really good football player, too. 21-7. Jax with the lead. NDSU with possession. And a big one coming up for Cam Miller. Merrick Williams, the running back. He makes a man miss. Boy, had plenty of real estate had he gotten through the line. A gain of six. It'll be second down and four. Now, Matt Enns now facing largest deficit all of their FCS championship game appearances biggest deficit prior to right now just seven points that speaks to their dominance in this dynasty yeah they stay ahead but we knew this was their toughest matchup in all those games they've had previously and it's playing out that way but key time for North Dakota State right now I think they need to establish their identity in this game and show that they can respond time for Miller quick toss that's a first down Chain mover to Jake Lippy. That's catch number 12 this season and a seven yard game. Remember, too, the Bison without the services, all world fullback Hunter Lipke, who's been out. And you remember what he did in this first matchup. He was sensational as NDSU got off to that great start in the Fargo Dome. And certainly, they're missing his services today. First down, 10 to play in our first half here in Frisco. Zach Mathis lines up in the slot. Hand off to T.K. Marshall, a two-yard gain, and that's it. I'm just saying, it's just nowhere to run inside there. Once you get in between the tackles, this defensive line is as good as advertising. They're more than just Caleb Sanders. I mean, this is a group that they rotate, you know, 12 guys a game. They said it at all times. We'll always have different matchup combinations there. Trying to control a lot of scrimmage, fresh legs, not a big drop off. And we're seeing it make it a tough day for the Bison to run the football, which is normally their bread and butter. Adam Bach on the field as well. He's healthy. That's been significant. Cam Miller straight ahead. No gain on the play. It'll be third down. Reese Winkleman met him in the hole. And watch them just swallow it up. If you're going to run the quarterback, then you have to be able to get a push off the line of scrimmage. Look how many blue jerseys are either at the line of scrimmage or behind the line of scrimmage. Spread them out. This is a case where I would like to see the offensive coordinator, Tyler Roll, spread them out. They had some success with empty, had some one-on-one -on -one soft matchups. Attack this zone that you're seeing right now from South Dakota State. They'll swing it out. 
Merrick Williams has it nowhere close to the line of line to gain, and he was sworn after just a three-yard pickup. Isaiah Stalbert met him first. Advantage Jackrabbits defensive coordinator Jimmy Rogers if he has the ability to say drop 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 come up and make the tackle make them throw it short and look at the job of tackling by the blue jerseys to limit the amount of yards that were gained and Back to the drawing board for Matt Entz Trailing by 14 Kate Steindorf On to punt Jaden Yonke back deep to receive and a wobbler fielded cleanly at the 16. Punt of 39. Jack Rabbits get it back with a two touchdown lead when we return here at Frisco. <laughs> Tune in to. I like the hometown radio just because you know uh, how much it means. Yes. Scott Howard, Brian Estridge getting it done. Always appreciate their efforts. Halfway through our second quarter. Hey, big possession here in the FCS National Championship. Hand off to Isaiah Davis, got to the edge, bump down. And that'll be a gain of three, and that's it. They were fortunate he didn't break this one. They actually drew this up pretty nicely. Just missed one little block downfield. You see there, that block's just a little bit late. Otherwise, Davis could have made a miss. But I like what you're saying. Big drive right now for North Dakota State defensively. You're down by 14. You cannot allow the Jackrabbits to move this ball down the field and increase their lead. In this half. Remember, it was North Dakota State that jumped out to a two score advantage in the Fargo Dome. Second half was dominated by SDSU. Bit of a carryover so far. On second down, Granowski steps up, avoids the pressure, and heaves a pass. It was dangerous. Intended for Amar Johnson. Third down. The Bison rise into the occasion. And I thought I'd see a little bit more of Granowski running the football. Know. He's not the same runner he was as a freshman, but he's a very deceptive runner. He's a strong runner at 6'3", 220 pounds. When he puts his foot in the ground, he can hurt you with his legs. Third and seven, Gronowski told us this week, yeah, he's a little nervous before kick. Calms himself by taking a deep breath before going out on the field. Spells out the word relax, similar to Aaron Rodgers. And a timeout will be called by NDSU. Well, Matt Entz knows how important this third and seven is coming up here at the end, towards the end of our first half. We'll step aside as well. Five, that's how they scored. They're going to need him to put up more drives like that where he's stringing together three or four passes consecutively. Bison need their defense to come up with a big play here. Crafton Yonke switching sides. Hands off. Johnson got a first down and a lot more. Lamar Johnson rumbling. Gain of 18 yards brought down by Courtney Eubanks. Yeah, gave him a lot of eye candy, a lot of different looks to look at. They switched the formation from the right side to the left side. Then they were able to pull around Bernston, number 61, the guard to lead downfield. A lot of deception, but nice execution by the offense. A great job running through the arm tackle by Amar Johnson. Johnson's numbers. Four carries, 55 yards. South Dakota State on the ground has been dominant so far. This direction, Davis probing. Davis to the 45. Eight-yard game. Hey, Clark, you were talking there during that last break on the line of scrimmage. You can see the push and the shove by SDSU right now, right? Yeah, field level for sure. And so much of South Dakota State's offense and defense is predicated on beating North Dakota State. And the way that you beat North Dakota State is you win in the trenches. And right now, the boys in blue are swinging and they're winning this fight. Number six to go in the first half. Empty backfield, second and short. Screams quarterback run instead to the air. Bernowski retreats, floats one out of bounds looking for Kraft. A heavy pressure that time. The pocket collapsed by NDSU, and that was Eli Mostart. 53 in green and white. He can be the different maker for the Bison. I mean, 
You talk about Sanders for South Dakota State. Well, most starts that guy for North Dakota State. Interior pressure from that defensive tackle position. Jacks have converted on their last four third down attempts. Davis steps up, Wildcat set, direct snap, plowing straight ahead. Should be enough for the first down. And it is. Really like the quick decision by Isaiah Davis. So often you put a running back back there, Wildcat, they want to look fancy with it. He caught that snap and knew he was going to take it to the hole right away, pick up the necessary yardage. Now, Grinowski told us this week, I'm really glad we're playing NDSU in this game. It's kind of a storybook ending, potentially, if the Jacks find a way to win this championship, to do it against their arch rival almost 1,000 miles from home. And off to Davis. And a short burst, gain of three near midfield, and that's it. I mean, you mentioned it earlier. You quoted the great Rick Flair. Be the best, you got to beat the best. Yes. And, I mean, this certainly qualifies in that category given the dynasty run, nine championships in 11 years. North Dakota State's never lost here in Frisco. SDSU's trying for their first ever national title. And I would also like to add to Everybody knows that part Rick Flair says. Beat the man, got to beat the man. But what he also says is the hardest part is staying the man. And North Dakota State's been able to stay the man for quite a while. But that belt's on the line right now. Indeed it is. Johnson straight ahead. Tripped up at the 45. Six-yard gain. It'll be third and one. That looked like he was going to go to the house for a minute. Tutsi on the tackle. Four to play in the first half. And when teams are running the ball, they like to bring Tutsi and Dawson Weber close to the line of scrimmage. The six-year veterans for the Bison secondary. Helping out run support. But they got to be careful. Because we know that South Dakota State's not afraid to go with a little bait and switch. Draw you up close and then take a shot over the top. Third and one. Johnson the running back. Radowski. Told you. Jump pass and there it is. Told you. Caught for the touchdown is Michael Morgan from 44 yards out. Second score of the season for big number 34. And what a big time play that was. You're going to give it up for your partner? Well played, my friend. Well played. You've got to watch the bait and switch. When you start bringing your safeties close to the line of scrimmage, they're going to bait you into thinking you're going to make that tackle on short yard of situation. And they use Morgan, who's another one of those tight ends. They like to do a formation. So much eye candy. Peeking in the backfield. Uh-oh. Got him. Hook, line, and sinker. Perfect execution by the Jackrabbits. Senior from Illinois reaching the end zone. Dustman's extra point is good. 28 to 7. 3.30 to go in the first half in Frisco. And they caught him peeking in the backfield, short yarded situation. And you know that they were really trying to key in. We saw it on the previous plays, trying to control the line of scrimmage that way. Take a look right here. Here's the key. Watch right here. Let's see where he peeks. He's got that contained. That's his guy. He's looking in the backfield. He runs right by him, trying to be a hero to make the stop on third and short. That was just a little eight-yard flip pass. But when your momentum's taking you forward and I can sneak somebody behind you, that's well executed. They caught him. Is that the product of the extra time since the semifinal win and you get some more practice sessions in? to work in those kinds of plays, a wrinkle or so. Absolutely. You know, these two teams know each other so well, so you know that Luke Wirtz is the guy that loves to stop the run. I mean, the, the North Dakota State defensive coordinators told us Wirtz is going to be very active. We need him to make tackles. Well, he's coming up doing as he's been instructed, and I need to make a tackle, but the ball wasn't there. Kind of didn't pay attention to Morgan, who's only got six catches on the season. But when his number was called upon, came up with a huge play. NDSU, the largest deficit the Bison have faced here in Frisco. Their previous nine trips, just a touchdown. 
A kickoff bounces out of bounds, so a break for NDSU. Until today, obviously, now trailing by three scores. Kick out of bounds. Number 10. Ball be placed at the 35-yard line. First down. Coming up Tuesday night, ESPN has a great college basketball doubleheader. Up first at 7 Eastern, Michigan State travels. Face 14th-ranked Wisconsin. It's North Carolina preseason number one, battling number 11, Virginia. In ACC action, both games also on the app as well as ESPN. As important as it, we said that drive was for North Dakota State defensively to get a stop to not allow them to expand the lead, Equally important for the North Dakota State offense right now to try and cut in that lead. You've got three and a half minutes to go before the half. That's enough time for you to get it going. Miller has to throw it in a rush, and it's incomplete. Try to set up the screen to Hunter Brosio, and the fullback in the flats could not corral it. And what a what did Kark say down on the sideline? They're winning the battle of the line of scrimmage. I mean, look at those blue jerseys getting penetration, free releases, nowhere for Cam Miller to go with the football. Adam Bach crashed the pocket, sniffed that one out. Well, remember, NDSU did trail Incarnate Word at home by a score of 16 to nothing before coming back against that incredible offense. To come back here in Frisco today, to win another national championship. Kobe Johnson for a gain of three, maybe four. And that's been one of their most successful A-gap power runs they've had in this football game. And I think you don't abandon your bread and butter. If you pick up this first down, throw the ball right now, it's a passing situation, then I think you go back to running the football. Establish your identity and what it's going to take to get back in this. But right now, they need Cam Miller to complete a pass or make a play. Third and seven. Pressure. Miller off the back foot. Mathis has it. Into plus territory and an enormous pitch and catch. And a gain of 17 for the first down. Yeah, great recognition. One-on-one, -on -one, outside, soft coverage. Get the ball to Zach Mathis. Simple curl route. Picks up the necessary yardage. But it was that last second shift they did that got... Mathis one-on-one -on -one versus Kale Reader, who's a safety. Wide receiver versus safety. Give me the wide receiver every time. Miller six of nine. 91 yards and a touch. TK Marshall, the running back. Now in SDSU territory. Isaac with two timeouts to work with. Miller's going to heave one deep, and he's got a man in there. from 44 yards out, and the Bison are back in it. Jay, that's the first touchdown of this season for the redshirt freshman, Eli Green. And remember on the previous play, wide receiver versus safety, give me the wide receiver. Well, they get Green against Carl Reeder again, the safety. He goes falling down, not able to hold his course. And that's why he was so wide open there. They got the matchup that they wanted when they were able to strike back. Extra point is good, 28 to 14. Well, Eli Green coming out of that inside slot position, Jay. Yeah, I miss mean, what you want. You see him here, he gets a free release, twist him to the outside, then back in. That's Carl Reeder, who we talked about earlier, playing safety, gets turned around. As an offensive coordinator, if I can put my speed guy or my wide receiver against a safety that has to play the pass as well as the run, don't turn as quickly as a cornerback, that's the matchup that you want. And that was a great job by Tyler Roll to put his offense in that position to make that play. Cam Miller, efficient, two touchdown passes already. It's been a first half filled with big plays, all six touchdowns from 16 yards out or further, including that last one from 44 to Green. We got a beer snake going here in Frisco. That's always a good sign. And it's a it's a long one. Yeah. It's yeah. a long one. And, and, and they've got some they got some time left <laughs> before the half. They've got time before the half. Well, Toyota Stadium has been rocking. Mostly in favor of SDSU, but North Dakota State won nine championships in the last 11 years. They will not go away. 
And back in it after that last scoring strike. Yeah, Will Cardinal on to kick things off for the Bison. You know, what, we, what do we talk about? Going to the locker room will be interesting because both teams thought they played one great half of football against each other. So if you're North Dakota State, you're going to say, well, let's turn it around in the second half. But the key to this team is to get ahead. Normally do a great job. And first down plays for South Dakota State. If you're going to throw the ball, I need completed passes. They got their tight end involved early in the game, and this is a good job by any time your offensive coordinator calls a pass on first down, they're averaging almost 10 yards per play, getting rid of the ball as well as running the football. The first down efficiency has been the key for the Jackrabbits. Jacks have rushed for 128 yards so far today, and you see the production on first down. Some of that, a lot of that through the air. Yeah, picked it up 10 yards, gets equals first down, right? Yeah. As of last check, I think so. <laughs> and they're averaging the 10. But they got to make sure they finish off this half, protect the football. Going up, going into the locker room, up by 14, not the worst thing that could happen to you. See if Coach Stig wants to be aggressive here. Here's the answer is yes, but that throw in the turf looking for Tucker Kraft with heavy pressure. Oh, so now if you're North Dakota State, you've got two timeouts. You're thinking about getting the ball back, right? It depends on what happens on the second down play. If they pass it, you won't need to. But feeling good, maybe an opportunity to steal a little bit of momentum going into halftime and get the ball back with another chance to chip away. Absolutely. Big play here for South Dakota State. And remember the Jacks get the football to start the third quarter, so a chance for back-to-back -back possessions in the first and start the second. Johnson to a mass of humanity stays alive. Omar Johnson in the plus territory in a foot race. Dragged down at the 20, a gain of 55, and Dawson Weber prevented the touchdown. The balance. We talked about Isaiah Davis having tremendous balance, but watch Johnson. Davis is going to be a lead blocker, get to the edge, and just turn on the Jets. Makes Tutsi miss on the tackle, on the whiff. Huge play for South Dakota State. So uncharacteristic for the Bison to give up explosive plays, particularly in the running game. Johnson just a sophomore we were told by coach Stig this week he's finally healthy and you guys watch him because he's so quick now the numbers tell the total story six touches 115 yards and a touchdown we got a lot of football left Johnson gets a breather Davis on the field Yonke on the screen and Jaden with a nifty move Stop close to the 15, a gain of five. And another missed tackle by a Bison defender. So consecutive plays, we've seen guys from the secondary. And these are their two go-to guys. Michael Tutsi, we saw him just miss. And on this play, we saw Dawson Weber miss on a tackle that should have minimized the yardage on that play. Tackling the key, something that we normally don't say is an issue for North Dakota State. Both teams with two timeouts remaining. The big run by Johnson changes the whole complexion, potentially, of this quarter, of this game, and on this possession. Now Davis. No gain. It'll be third down. I wonder if they throw one of these jump balls. We talk about the Yankee brothers who are 6'3 apiece, and you've got tight ends that go 6'6", six, 6'7". Six, six, Try one of those 50-50 balls into the end zone for the half. Don't settle on a field goal attempt. Jack Rabbits have converted on their last six third down opportunities. Bauer in motion. Davis straight ahead and plunging forward. Stop short of the line to gain. Two-yard pickup. It'll be fourth down as time winds down. Yeah, a little bit of conservative there. Uh, I think, you know, you take a chance throwing it at the end zone. But I think they're going to let it go down. I thought we saw it to about three seconds on the clock, and they'll call a timeout. Now, but Coach Stig smiling just like he was pregame, just like he was yesterday always. at walkthrough. <laughs> and a timeout call will bring out Hunter Dustman for the field goal attempt. 
Let's take a look at the Capital One Cup standings while we have a moment as teams compete for a combined $500,000 in student athlete scholarships from Capital One. And uh, this will put a smile on Paul Carcatera's face as uh, Syracuse Orange in a prime position on the men's side and uh, North Carolina on the women's. That's what you got out of that graphic there. I mean, this is the FCS championship. We pull for the little guys. What about Vermont? The Catamounts. Come on. <laughs> in the top five. <laughs> I love it. Long ways to go. Hunter Dustman made 12 of his last 13. 17 of 24 overall this year. And well within his range. 30 yarder in the middle of the field. Chance to make it a three-score affair right before halftime. Should be the final play of our first half. On the way, and it is good. Plenty of leg there. A little dust up. Getting a little chippy. I think it's unfamiliar territory for North Dakota State going into the locker room down like this, and South Dakota State not letting up. Will the dynasty continue for NDSU, or is South Dakota State on the verge of claiming its first national championship? Jack Rabbits will get the ball first. Jaden Yonke. The nice move. Plow ahead to the 25. We check in with Paul Carcaterra. Well, we're I just caught up with Matt Anson. For starters, he is fired up. He's lost his voice almost entirely. Can hardly understand him. But when I did speak to him, he said the biggest issue for them defensively, they can't get off the field on third down. They're not tackling well. And South Dakota State's doing a good job of, of getting their safeties up and finding one-on-one -on -one coverage against their corners. Offensively, he just said they just didn't have enough time on the field. South Dakota State is absolutely owning the time of possession and dictating the pace of this game. I agree with them 100%, particularly about the tackling part. And they came out of the locker room, even on that kickoff return, missed tackle, and able to Jackrabbits to get better field position than they should have had. Yeah, and the Karks point, South Dakota State 7 of 9 on third down. Big gainer, Isaiah Davis. First play from scrimmage all the way to midfield. And a gain of 25 on the ground for the Jacks. Great run, great vision, but I think this might have been a hole. Take a look, in man on the line of scrimmage. See right there, he's trying to get away. Engaged, thought that should have been a penalty flag there. It was not, and the Jackrabbits take advantage with another explosive play. Davis with 88 yards, Amar Johnson with 115. The lead is 17 for the top seed Jacks. They were the favorites coming in. It's NDSU. Jaden Yonke in motion, deep give to Davis, twisting and turning, a gain of three. A tackle by Eubanks. This is just a big football team. You know, when you see South Dakota State, they're big. You know, the, the tackles, each 6'6". Interior line, they're all going three three bills plus. The, the big wide receivers, the huge tight ends. And then you throw in Davis at running back, 6'1", 220 pounds, that's still a big back. This is a big football team, and what you really have to enjoy, they play big, too. They push you around. Matched up very well against Iowa in the season opener on the road. Lost that game 7-3. to three. There were no touchdowns scored. Seven points coming with a field goal and two safeties. O'Brien jumped that time. Full start. 78. Five-yard penalty. Second down. I mean, Jay, that was a wild game, 7-3 to three with no touchdowns, two safeties really providing the winning margin for the Hawkeyes out of the Big Ten. And that's when Coach Stig said that I knew he had a good team because although the offense didn't show up, that defense, he knew this defense was going to be a championship caliber defense, and that's played out for him throughout the season. Second and 12 after the penalty. John O'Brien, Grinowski, design quarterback keeper. Grinowski with a pass. There he goes. Mark Grinowski from 51 yards out. Well, 
Isaiah Davis with a monster block to spring his quarterback who's healthy and making a big time difference in this game. His second appearance in the championship affair. And I'm going back to offensive coordinator Zach Lohan. He is absolutely carving them up with the play selection there. We knew Gronowski could run the football. Wasn't much of a running threat in the first half. But my, oh my, what a huge play to start off this second half. Hunter Dustman on for the PAT. Sneaks that one just inside the left upright. Gronowski showing you the speed. Dial it up, coach. I can handle it. Gets a nice little lead block there. Way to change direction. And the kid from Naperville, Illinois, feeling himself, and I would too. All right, at first, let's start it off. The linebacker, Kubitz, I don't even know if he sees this block coming that's coming his way by the way of Isaiah Davis as he gets him there. And as we run this play there, you'll see the wham block come there. He doesn't see it too late. But freezer right there. Take a look at the effort here by Yonkis. He's going to get not one, but two Bison defenders trying to tackle his quarterback. Wipes him out there. Explosive play again in the running game. And the fantastic effort down the field by the wide receiver. Jackson Yonke, twin brother Jaden. They say Jackson's got the bigger neck. Loves playing football, they both do. They're both their harshest critic and also yet their biggest fan, so to speak. But you take out two on one play where your quarterback rumbles in for a touchdown. That's something special. That's what you want, you know. You wonder about the scouting report when they say, oh, one's got a big neck, one doesn't. Well, if you're gonna be the one with the bigger neck, you need to block a little bit better than the one with the smaller neck. And he showed it there. Raja Nelson muffs the kick return in his own end zone. Did he get out? Should be a touchback either way. We turned our rules expert Matt Austin here, right? That's a touchback no matter what happens. Yeah, until you get possession, it's just a live ball. It goes back into the end zone. You can take a knee and down it there. That's a touchback. Good call by the officials. The result of the play you is see a there, you know, a I think the folks at home will wonder, well, once he gets it, it looks like he's trying to run to get out. But you're saying it doesn't matter. Even if he's running, he's in the end zone. And a touchback is the call and the correct call. So, and he's fortunate they marked him in that end zone because another look looked like he might have come out to about that one foot line. 38-14, two minutes into our second half. NDSU has to have points on this possession. Cole Payton checks in at running back, at quarterback rather. He races for a gain of six. I can't believe Caleb Sanders is back on the field. In the second quarter, you saw him run off the field on one leg. Trainers were working on his right ankle, taped it up. He's good to go. I've been watching him a lot today. He is so patient, doesn't really say much on the sidelines, and he's an elementary education major. He wants to teach second to fifth grade after his football days are over. And Imagine walking into an elementary school and seeing that guy as your teacher. That's kind of cool. <laughs> no doubt. Second and four. First touch for Peyton in this championship game. Miller's going to race ahead. Miller's got a first down. Crossing the 40, a gain of 11 for the NDSU quarterback. Yeah, you see Caleb Sanders, 6'1", 280. You know, he's teaching you maybe a little uh, elementary school, middle school geography, or what have you. I don't know. Put respect on his name. That's impressive. Uh, but I think not so fast on a teacher career. I think he's got a pro career ahead of him playing this game that he loves in the NFL, the next level. I mean, one-on-one -on -one disruptor doesn't have the measurable you would like in terms of height. But besides that, he's got it all. Great think about hands. Yeah, think about what Jimmy Rogers told us this week. The... Very good defensive coordinator for SDSU. He's twitchy. We see that there. Van Merrill and uh, also Caleb Sanders combined for the stop. And watch this instinct you're going to see from Sanders. Not going to give you the full rush. He's going to squat and look for the ball carry and then have the ability to change directions and find the ball carry in the backfield after reading the blocks. That's something you don't, you don't see. It's a high intellectual play on the football field. Hey, although I'm not set to bull rush, I'm responsible for a gap. I have to locate the football and make the play. 
Bison still with plenty of time, but again, the importance of this possession and to get points. Trailing by 24. Miller heaves it low and incomplete, looking for Eli Green. Green had the touchdown grab in the second quarter. Third down and eight. Largest deficit going all the way back. And this is showing. I mean, they're playing like Rush. This is not North Dakota State football. Timing's off. They've got a sense of urgency, but they're not all on the same page. They look a little frazzled at times. Cam Miller needs some magic here. Empty backfield, third and eight surveys. Crosser is there to the tight end. Stuffle stopped near midfield, a gain of five. Penalty, and now yeah. decision Perfect. time as a penalty marker uh, comes in. Absolutely on Kubis. Uh, they're going to put that back. That will be 15-yard variety probably. Is. I mean, you see at the end, I mean, plays clearly over. Comes in head first, whistles blown. Dead ball, personal foul, unnecessary roughness. 60 of the offense. 15 yard penalty will be enforced from the dead ball spot. The down counts. So it's fourth down. Fourth down. Yeah. Bring out the punt team. Correct. 63 is the number. Wow. And, and what a. Well, Kubis decked Malik Lofton. Didn't have to. And instead of fourth and two, it's going to be fourth. And a long ways to go on the punt team on the field. Yeah, you know, you don't like to call out a young man, but that's a pretty selfish play. In this situation here, your team's trying to fight to get back in it. Whistle's blown. You have to play better than that within the whistles. South Dakota State with all the momentum. Fair catch called for and made by Jaden Yonke after a punt of 51 yards. Jackrabbits have it when we come back here in Frisco story rush yards does as well 264 for the jackrabbits just 71 for ndsu unthinkable before today between these two teams yeah one-sided they're just really playing well the number one team is showing you why they're number one Brudnowski wants more yonke had it glance right off of his fingertips that was jackson in the sunlight out of the shadows and i think that's what it was that ball snuck up on yonke I'd like to see him run the football right now, get the first down, then get out of the shadows where you're playing in sunlight again. But that throw there came from the dark side of the field all the way to the bright sunlight. Loan them your, loan them your shades, Phil Pop. I got some. <laughs> They're right here. I got some for Christmas. Good afternoon for Gronowski through the air and on the ground. That last touchdown coming on the ground. The sophomore quarterback, Amar Johnson with a touch. Well, he's been hard to bring down. Bison will do it at the 21, a gain of seven. And that's another one of the plays that tells you, where's the penetration? Look how deep he gets before he's touched. He has the ability to get to the line of scrimmage and then jump cut and get back to the right. If you're winning the battle at the line of scrimmage, he's covering up when the first hole's not there. But we've seen him time and time again control the line of scrimmage and allow the runners secondary running lanes. They're going to run it again. In this situation now, you control the line of scrimmage, run the football again. In the box for the Bison. Johnson, the running back. Ranowski to the air. What and the pass is caught. A one-handed grab by Jaden Yonke. And that is enough for a first down. Throwing the ball again from the dark side to the light side, but look at the one-handed grab. Uh, the other half of the Wonder Twins, Jaden Yonke. Oh, that's concentration. You only need one foot inbounds with control in college. He secured that and maybe then some. Five grabs already. The 6'3 senior, Madison, South Dakota. Whole state watching back at home, hoping, waiting for their first national championship. Here's Jackson with a catch. Big wide receivers. And a gain of 12. That's another first down. A stop by Jade Price. Jack Rabbit since that first quarter punt 
Their only punt of the afternoon, dominant. With mostly touchdowns. I mean, that's what you really like to see. Mostly touchdowns, not settling for field goal tries. Great offensive performance. And the big offensive unit is playing big. Well, you talked about the play calling, too, of offensive coordinator Zach Lujan. It has been a magnificent game plan. All of these SDSU coaches, too, talk to us this week as Davis will be stopped after a short pickup. Really, everything about their program has been designed for this moment. Yes. And it's been designed to battle NDSU for a championship because they were the team that kind of paved the way, so to speak, Missouri Valley Football Conference and showed the path to win multiple championships. Yeah, and the coaches took it upon themselves, you know, particularly the defensive coordinator, Jimmy Rogers. But when you ask, Coach, what's it been like to be, for all intents and purposes, you know, the second best team in your conference sometimes, third best team in your conference against your rival? How did you handle that? It only made us better, and they geared themselves up. How do we build a program that can beat North Dakota State? And right now, we're close to doing that. Johnson A-gap burst. Driven down after a gain of four. Kayser with the tackle, an important third down coming up. I mean, the passion that we heard in the voices of these coaches, in particular Jimmy Rogers, as you just indicated, he said this is personal. It's personal not only to me, it's personal to everybody in this building, everybody that made the trip to Frisco to face off against Matt Ince. And they showed up. I mean, the fan base came out and showed, and the Jackrabbit former player association was here they had over 250 people watch their practice and walk through yesterday halfway through the third on third down davis he stopped just short four yard game let's see how aggressive coach dig wants to be punt it touchy the tackle i'd punt the football here i mean your defense is playing great do not give North Dakota State, a spark of life with great field position in case they make a stop on one play. I agree with the decision here by South Dakota State to punt the football. Hunter Dustman to punt. Jaden Price back deep to receive for the Bison. Still have life. He points. Fourth and one, Dustman gets it away. Wobbler, an outstanding bounce for the Jacks. Great play. It'll be ruled down at the one. It's a punt of 52. The Bison get it back in Frisco after this. State fans hoping for a miracle against their rivals in the Missouri Valley Football Conference. SDSU trailing by 24. Jay Walker, Roy Philpott, Paul Carcaterra. Bison have it. But they're pinned deep in their own territory at their own one-yard line. To Merrick Williams with a carry and nothing doing. Swarmed, driven backwards. No gain on the play. This is going to be tough. This is going to be tough right now for them to get enough room to get a punt off. Because they've struggled controlling the line of scrimmage. I think Cam Miller's going to have to complete a pass. They brought in Williams, the big back, to try and plow ahead. But there's no place for him to go. Frisco has been on fire for this game. It has been electric. It has been loud. I'm telling you, it's going to be tough, Roy. Third down, and Williams could not find a crease. We saw Adam Bach, who's now healthy, he has been a difference maker for defensive play caller Jimmy Rogers today. 39. Oh, boy. This place is going to get loud. Right in front of the student section with the band of South Dakota State as well. Empty backfield for Cam Miller. Seven yards deep in his own end zone. Floats it across the middle. That's Zach Mathis, and that's a big-time first down. Across the 30, a gain of 29. And this is just too much time in the pocket to allow Miller. This is a slow developing route. You see it comes all the way across the formation, delayed crossing route. If there's penetration against the quarterback, he doesn't have time to wait for this slow developing route to come open. But 
I'm going to blame that on a poor job of the pass rush not getting there. Mathis appeared to be banged up going back to the sideline. 73 yards on three catches. The senior from Tampa. Miller will keep it. And Sinau crossing the 35. Gain of seven. So quality pickup on first down for the Bison. Oh, this would be quality if they can put some points on the board considering their starting position. Showing you some fight. Key completion on third down by Cam Miller to Zach Mathis. As Mathis comes back into the game. Tremendous size, six foot six inch senior from Tampa, Florida. Jay, are you all right with the huddling and the methodical approach on this drive, trailing by 24 here late in the third? Yeah, because you got to get plays. You need to convert, make sure everybody's on the same page right now. And that's who they are. Not necessarily constructed to come from behind. Kobe Johnson at first down. Spun down near the 47, a 10-yard gain. Jason Freeman, the tackle. Bison now on the move near midfield. And this is when they're playing their best football. It's a methodical approach. Ripping off chunks of yardage, wearing you out. Well, you think back to some of the great dynasty runs in previous years. The FBS level, Alabama's won six titles going back well over a decade. Notre Dame, Oklahoma back in the 40s, 50s, even the 70s. North Dakota State right up there with any of those runs. One-handed catch will be made by Tameric Williams into SDSU territory. Six-yard gain will push the pile. Something to take note, gentlemen. South Dakota State is deep on defense. 27 different guys have started games for Coach Jimmy Rogers. And we've mentioned his scheme, the way that he approaches the game. It's all about making stops against North Dakota State. It's a result of all the years losing. He sculpted this defense to beat this offense, and right now they need a stop. And Karki told us they've been a huge part of my growth as a coach, as a defensive coordinator. The losses and the run that the Bison have been on. Speaking of running, Cam Miller racing for a first down, a gain of 10. He's learned through his failures. Enough said. Yeah, he said that to us this week, and we all kind of paused on our Zoom call. And then he resumed and really went through a two-and-a-half-minute spiel in just talking about the emotions of this rivalry, what it means to compete, to coach. Of course, he played you know, as part of this at South Dakota State in the late 2000s. Bison on the move here. Lots the number of blue jerseys that get to the football. Off the direct snap, Eli Green on the reverse, and he's driven down. A loss of eight. Ryan Van Merrill. And this tells you how quick this defense is. Every point of this play had the ability for disaster. You see right there, they're on the running back right away. Okay, you want to pitch it to somebody else? We've got two guys there. I saw on this drive, well, you're... We were talking about this. Look at the setup. Look where the Blue Jerseys were. I saw something I've never seen before in a football game. I saw 11 guys get to the football on defense on one play during this drive. 11. Everybody gets to the football here. They surround it. They swarm. They play with heart. Second and 19 after the TFL. Long toss incomplete. Braylon Henderson was trying to corral it. Native Wiley, Texas and Plano East High School. Stalbert ripped it out. Third and long. Are you thinking about picking up half of this here to go for it on fourth down, Jay? Yeah, absolutely. You just need a completion right now. Don't be afraid to throw underneath and let somebody run for it. But I'm not taking shots at the sideline. Try to find a crease where if you throw a five, six-yard pass, he can run for it eight, nine yards afterwards. Jack Rabbit fans on their feet in Frisco. Play clock winding down. Clean snap for Miller. All day to throw. What and catch. caught in bounds. The initial <laughs> ruling that was Jake Lippy. At the 26, a gain of 18. And let's make sure that he had full possession with a foot in bounds. Oh, he got the feet down. He climbed the ladder, then located below where his feet were going. 
Look at him climb the ladder, make the catch. He looked down. Fourth and one was one yard short. Nine of 14 on fourth down this year of the Bison. Rosio checks in at running back. 6'1", 230. Miller's going to keep it, and he'll cross the 25. He has enough for the first down. And, and you had to run to the left side behind Cody Mock. I mean, season's on the line, game's on the line, fourth and one. We're going left. I'm going behind my All-American left tackle, assuming he's going to win his battle. I like the play call. 12th play of the drive coming up. Cody Malk came to campus as a walk-on, as a tight end. He's grown up through the years and now has become an NFL draftable prospect at offensive tackle. Started out at their over position as a glorified tight end slash offensive lineman. Kobe Johnson. No game. So this is why you have to throw the ball. Look at all those blue jerseys around the ball carrier. Go to the secondary. Get some one-on-one -on -one matchups where you can make a catch, make somebody miss, and pick up big yardage. Bison will try to squeeze in one more play in the third, and they do. Time for Miller. Into the flats. Johnson was hit hard by Lofton. Check it. It was Gales. And Dyshawn Gales prevents the completion. Well, the emotions of a national championship game on display, and the Jackrabbits firmly in control with 15 minutes to go. The NCAA FCS championship continues after this message and a word from our ABC stations. 15 minutes to go back in Frisco, Texas, near the 2023 NCAA FCS championship. 38 to 14, the Jackrabbits in search of their first national championship, trying to dethrone the reigning champs, North Dakota State. And the Bison, 9 0 here in Frisco. Dominant in every sense of the word. The Jacks have enough to finish the deal. Jay Walker Roy, felt by Paul Carcaterra. Sellout crowd on hand at Toyota Stadium just north of Dallas, Texas. Third and 10 for the Bison. Miller off the back foot. Mathis, that's enough for the first down. And Zach Mathis picks up 12 and the drive continues. Yeah, soft inside coverage from Gales. One-on-one -on -one matchup out there. So anytime you see one-on-one -on -one that easy with the defensive back playing 10 yards off the ball, that's where you go with the football. And I was mentioning earlier, I think that's where they'll have some success. Get the ball to the wide receivers away from the pile. Force the secondary of South Dakota State to make some plays. Don't allow it to be with their front seven, which we know is as good as advertised. Bison with this drive now over seven minutes long. Hand off to Marshall. Three-yard gain, and that is it. At some point, NDSU has to go with more of a sense of urgency. They're just kind of not who they are. You know, this personnel group they're bringing on the field right now is not necessarily who they are, but for the occasion, they got to do it. When's the last time you seen a college football huddle? I mean, the huddle's like almost extinct, but they're sticking to what they do. Well, we've seen huddles, we've seen fullbacks, and we have not talked about name, image, and likeness. This game has had a different feel to it. A couple of blue-collar teams going to work. Kobe Johnson straight ahead. Enough for the first down. Can he push. cross the goal line? And he can. Look at the push. That's a touchdown for the Bison and Kobe Johnson. They're not giving up, Roy. That's what that tells me. Look at the second effort here. After the contact, Kobe Johnson knew he was close to the goal line. And as he gets here, making this run, he knows he's close. Stopped a little short. Gets the push, the push, and the rest of the group comes to push him in. Jay, shocked here. North Dakota State isn't going for two. Three touchdowns, three two-point conversions. Conceivably wow. could tie it up. Instead, the extra point. And our new score, 13-44 to go. 38-21 in favor of the Jacks. Check, that's still three scores. So if you get it to 16, then you're talking about 
two touchdowns, two two-point conversions. You can tie this thing up if you have enough fight. Let's see if it even gets that close where they can regret that decision possibly. I'm no mathematician, but I think I followed the arithmetic. Basically, the three touchdowns, three two-point plays, you can tie it up instead. You're trailing by 17. No onside kick and the fair catch called for by SDSU. So right now, even if they can stop South Dakota State from scoring the rest of this game, they're going to need the ball three times, at least three possessions. Well, think about that for head coach Matt Entz. The last drive, the good news is it went 99 yards. Yes. The bad news is 16 plays and almost half a quarter off the clock. Yeah, but they score. You know, we talked about it. You know, should there be a sense of urgency? That's not who they are. They don't do that. You know, they can throw the ball. They can hit you with big plays, but impressive drive going 99 yards. Took a little bit longer than you would expect, but the key is they put a touchdown on the scoreboard. Now can NDSU defensive coordinator David Braun come up with some kind of magic here to force a turnover? Power luck by the Jackrabbits. Isaiah Davis will try to cut it back against the grain. There's a penalty marker. Davis stays alive. Rumbles for a gain of 16. We'll check the infraction. Thrown in that area where you normally call holding. Holding. 61 the offense. 10 yard penalty for the previous spot. Replay first down. Evan Burnson. Big infraction called on the Jacks. Your number 26 for John Stiglmeyer. And what a career he has had as the head coach. You go back 10 more years involved with this program. Always optimistic, always smiling. And plenty of energy. The rest of his staff. Back him up here. It's first and 20. Davis again. North Dakota State ready and waiting. Gain of two and that's it. Penetration. Coming in with those linebackers and also Tony Pierce, Nick Kubitz. And that's a discipline you have to have. You know, you stick to the running game here. You're up by you know, 17 points here. If you don't score this possession, okay, but you want the clock to keep running. Maybe it become a wasted possession because you got the penalty, but let the clock tick. I wouldn't throw the football here unless it was a screen pass or something of that nature. Not saying you're going to play conservative, but after the penalty, realize game situation. Well, the ultimate test for a team that's never won it. Set up the screen and it's incomplete. That play looked doomed from the snap of the football looking for Tucker Kraft and Kayser blew it up. That's what they believe in Kraft trying to go with the tight end bubble screen. Good job of recognition by Kayser. Third and 18 is this a draw or some kind of quarterback draw yeah <laughs> quarterback draw or get the ball to davis but i'm still a little surprised they elected to throw it that last play where they stopped the clock now the redemption story for mark ranowski has been terrific on third down you saw the production he'll hand it off to davis along the far side no real estate and ushered out Back at the 15, he's going to lose two yards there. The clock will stop momentarily. And three and out for SDSU. Uh, it became a waste possession after the penalty on first down. The one they'll look back on, but the way the defense has been playing, you hope that they can keep it up. But North Dakota State were one of the few, we we'll call it a four and out, four plays and out, forcing a punt. They should get the ball back in pretty good field position. Jaden Price standing at his own 42. Hunter Dustman, punter and place kicker today. For the Jackrabbits standing at his own one. All of these moments become critical. Punted away from Price, and how about the bounce? Whistle dead at the 28. A punt of 56 yards for Hunter Dustman. Bison football after this. 
Back in Frisco, where last night it was announced the 2022 FCS Award winners, an incredible season for Incarnate Word quarterback Lindsey Scott Jr. And Jay, Coach Stig, the Eddie Robinson Award winner. And how about Illinois State linebacker Zeke Vandenberg getting it done as well? Absolutely. Fantastic job. And, you know, the Peyton Award is the FCS level of the Heisman Trophy. Eddie Robinson Award, Coach of the Year. Buck Buchanan, Mr. Graham. And how about this? All the awards on the FCS level are named after HBC grads. Love it. The freshman of the year is the Rice Award. Buck McCann went to Graham Lincoln. We know Walter Payton went to Jackson State. And Eddie Robinson, the one, the only legendary coach of Grambler. Former Howard signal caller, Jay Walker, Roy Philpott, Paul Carcaterra, FCS National Championship. Bison have work to do to defend the crowd. Miller fires a quick strike. Mathis has it for a gain of 12. That'll move the chains. It's a three-possession game, and this defense from South Dakota State knows they have to make one more stop. And Adam Bach, you guys have mentioned him all afternoon long. He's the leader on the field, off the field, too. He's getting the troops ready. And he knows what's at stake, the first national championship for this team. And in a day and age where everyone specializes in sports, a five-sport high school star, football, track, basketball, baseball, and even wrestling. Team captain, mechanical engineering major as well for Adam Bach. His health has been critical. Johnson spun down after a short game. But right now, if I'm North Dakota State, I'm looking for the explosive play. Not enough time to necessarily be as methodical, but you want to get that quick hitter, that quick hitting play, maybe a play action, go over the top, one-on-one -on -one ball with Zeke Mathis, who's played a fantastic football game for you. Zach Mathis, pardon me. Officially a gain of one. Last stop made by Caleb Sanders, who remains on the field impressively. Miller fires a pass and it's picked up. Jason Freeman, the weak side linebacker. Second turnover of the game for the Bison. Outstanding field position for the Jackrabbits. They are in business in plus territory. Yeah, they're through in the double coverage here, and you've got to make a better read. All he's doing is reading his eye. So you're going to see him come from right here. And look at his eyes. He's got a clear vision on the quarterback. He's just looking at the pocket. Where are you taking me? Where are you taking me? Where are you taking me? Oh, you're taking me to the football. I'm going with it. Great recognition by Jason Freeman. Poor decision where to go with the football. You had two blue jerseys that had a chance of making that play. And Freeman had the arm injury against Montana State. He was questionable today. That's his second pick of the season. Boy, that puts SDSU in oh, prime position. Seat. Empty backfield. Granowski back. Out of the gun once again. They want more. Kraft has it. That's a first down. And the massive tight end, NFL prospect, whistled down inside the 25, a gain of 18. And they practice this throw over and over again. Free release versus cover two. Line drive throw before you get to the safeties to get hit. Boy. You think about Dallas Goddard back in the day for SDSU. It wasn't that long ago. Another tremendous tight end now playing in the National Football League. And boy, the Bison faithful that made the trip to Frisco once again on the verge of seeing their team lose for the first time ever. 9-0 before today. He'll fake it to Johnson. And Gronowski. Lasso down. No gain on the play. That was James Kayser. What you want to see from your quarterback there. Aggressive play call, it's not there. Tuck it, just get back to the line of scrimmage, and you live to play another play with possession of the football. And we've seen this young man just really mature. How impressed were we when we talked with him during the week? And he gets it. He, he gets it all. An emotional journey, the injury, the spring of 2021 in this stadium in Sam Houston State, tore his ACL, remained in the facility, watched the celebration, used that as motivation. It took him more than a year to come back. Snap infraction, 50 the offense. Five-yard penalty, second down. Well, Gus Miller had some snap issues early in this season. He's been rock solid today and really in the back half of this incredible run by the Jacks. 
But you mentioned Gronowski. You know, he played high school basketball, wore the double nickel, number 55. I mean, Dikembe Mutombo, I mean, he would go out, he would block some shots and love the physicality of basketball. His teammates at the time, Nequa Valley with the Wildcats said he brought football onto the hardwood. He's a tough guy. He'll hand it off. Lamar Johnson straight ahead on second and long. You know, you were talking, Roy, about Kronowski when he was injured sitting out. He told me this week when he missed last season, the game actually slowed down for him when he returned. He watched a ton of film. He became a, a football junkie and understanding his teammates and empathy and everything involved around that injury and sitting out has made him a better player, he said. Yeah, the headset on the entire season a year ago. Taking a page out of the Aaron Rodgers playbook before the game. He takes a deep breath, spells out the word, relax. And then does it again just to help calm his nerves to get ready for the task at hand. End zone. Touchdown, SDSU, Jackson Yonke from 30 yards out, and that may just about do it. What a throw right in the bucket. What a route by Yonke. Fantastic job of setting up the defensive back on a little double move. And as you mentioned, perfectly thrown ball. I mean, look at this. Nice tight spiral, but look at the separation right over the left shoulder where only his receiver can make the catch. Older brother Brian Gronowski celebrating in the stands with his parents. Boy, and that tells you exactly how he feels about the rivals of SDSU, right? No love lost. And this is what you call leave no doubt. Yeah. I mean, well, they're trying to see. They're going to take a look at this. They're trying to see if he was routed out of bounds and then came back inbound. Replay official today is Bill Sora. We turn to our rules expert, Matt Austin, on that sequence. And how is that officiated when you're forced out and then you come back in? Well, as long as you're forced out and the official sees it and throws it, drops his hat to signify that, you can come back in and be the first to touch the ball. The only way this could be reviewable is if there was absolutely no contact at all and it's just a missed call by the official. So uh, Replay wanted to take a look at it and see if he actually was contacted. Yeah. He, replay can't decide on the severity of the contact. Any contact, hats down, then it's not reviewable. If they've got the angle, I would love to see it because, as I mentioned before, it was a little double route. You see, he, he started off running a... Gave himself enough room to go out and then went up. So he's called out. No, this would be a good look right here. You see him selling him there. Well, that's enough of a push to be considered. You know, he didn't run out of bounds on his own as well, right? Would you agree? A absolutely. Really, any contact at all, if there's a call, then, yeah. then it's going to be enough to force him out. Oh, yeah, because he's clearly out. Oh, wow. Yes. You see the foot there. I didn't realize he was that far out of bounds. But because of the contact, he didn't willingly go out of bounds. That's a push there out of bounds. Yeah, you can see the push actually knocked him off stride. So, yes, I would say that's a force out. That should be a touchdown. After review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Touchdown. Forty-four twenty-one. Call confirmed. The Jack Rabbits on the verge here in Frisco. <laughs> The fourth touchdown for SDSU. Look at that. You knew it was 30 tough. yards out or further. <laughs> the better Dakota. <laughs> it's getting personal. <laughs> An extra point is good. Gronowski's are celebrating. They made the trip down and rightfully so. It's all SDSU in Frisco, Texas. What a special day this is becoming for the Jack Rabbits. 45 on the board, the most points by any team since the title game moved to Frisco. Who saw this coming? You talk about a game that was played during the regular season divide, decided by three points. Bussy on the return for NDSU. Across the 30 to the 32. 
Coming up tomorrow night, 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific on ESPN. Max Duggan, TCU, take on Stetson Bennett and the defending champion Georgia Bulldogs. College Football Playoff National Championship game presented by AT&T. Just across the way here in the Metroplex in Fort Worth, the TCU Bookstore. It's been a couple of long lines for about the last four months since Sonny Dykes arrived, and we will see if TCU can pull off the upset. Hey, you don't have to go to the bookstore. When I got off the plane, DFW, it was TCU everything. Didn't know there was so much purple down here in the state of Texas. Yeah, there so. is when you win at the level that Sonny Dykes and Max Duggan and Quentin Johnston have this season. Defense really stood tall against Michigan. The two picked sixes last week in the semifinal. And really TCU. Shocking the college football universe with that win. Canyon Bauer helped to his feet and then quickly jogging off the field under his own power, and that's a good scene. And Bauer, one of the guys, the coach said, does all the dirty work, does a lot of little things there. As you can see, he's starting slot receiver, but also plays on special teams. Underappreciated, but one of the core pieces of this South Dakota State offense. It's starting to sound a lot like Brookings, South Dakota. Home of the Jackrabbits. Eight minutes left. And the Bison have one more comeback attempt left in the tank. Tenth time in 12 years that they've arrived here in Frisco. And Johnson a full head of steam. Has a first down and a gain of 10. Now Kobe Johnson, when he's touched the rock today, has produced... Chase Norblade, SDSU defender, fell down and a timeout called for the moment. Well, Tucker Large started in Norblade's place today. And we will step aside in Frisco. Dakota State did a fantastic job stuffing the run. And Cart gave us the update on Caleb Sanders, who hobbled off in the first half, then came back to play in big number 99. It's really been one of the anchors for this Jackrabbits defense. So many different ways this afternoon. Swing pass to Williams, and nothing doing. It's ruled incomplete as it popped out late. I'll give Williams credit for gutting this one out. He was injured. And that ankle injury going back to the quarterfinal. Didn't know if he would play. It was not listed on the 2D depth chart release late last week, but he has been out there. Second and 10 for Cam Miller. Jettison to the right, and then go out near the 48, make it the 49, gain of seven. Keeping the play alive there. You know, as we mentioned before, this is not... You know, Bison football, how they're used to doing it. They're used to being in close games and finding ways to win late. But now, truly in the trail position, yet to find that explosive play they need to get a quick strike, put some points on the board. Third and two. Miller retreats. Now darts ahead. Made one defender miss close to first down yardage. Stop at the line. And that is enough to move the sticks. Think about this, Jay. North Dakota State all-time in the FCS playoffs. All-time, 44-3. And, and to lose a game in the postseason, it is newsworthy. It's never happened in the championship game that we're seeing here today. But, I mean, it's dominance winning national titles and just at least reaching the championship. Going unscathed in that department. Eric Williams, a gain of five. So many years, you always knew the road to an FCS championship, you have to go through Fargo, North Dakota, you know, in the Fargo Dome. And what surprised a lot of people is they proved we're not just an indoor football team. We can win outside here in Frisco with their preparation. Remarkable run. Coaches have been rewarded. Players have championships. Program national exposure. Zach Mathis. We'll move the chains. And a nine-yard gain. Mathis put up huge numbers today. Now going over 100 yards through the air. That's 
Eisen not going away, quietly moving the quicker pace. And off to Williams in a short game. Yeah, you see, even their hurry up involves trying to sneak that A gap power running there to break off one of those big ones, but have not been able to do so. You know, and I always say this the years I've seen North Dakota State, they always coach to their talent as well. It hasn't always been one size fits all during their run. I think back to when they had Trey Lance, and it was an open offense. It was spread. No quarterback under center all the time. It was open up the offense. I think back to last season when they had Christian Watson featuring him in the speed, allowing him to get on the edge with jet sweeps, things of that nature. Now with the Packers. Now with the Packers. He's getting busy with the Packers, and we know Trey Lance was a first-round pick. So they coached to the talent level, and they developed talent. Third and four, Miller retreating. Contact, but no penalty flag intended for Zach Mathis with Beanham providing the coverage. Cody Mouth slow to get up. And now fourth down. Five minutes remaining and a long fourth and five. Had some success with the crossing routes, slow developing crossing routes if they can get the matchup and protect the quarterback. Miller's got to have it. Pressure. Heaves one. Nobody home and it's intercepted. Gales the pick. Racing out of bounds and celebrating the South Dakota State fan base. Fourth interception of the season for Dyshawn Gales. And the recognition not there for Cam Miller. One of the few times that the Jackrabbits played straight man-to-man -man coverage. Cover two man, two safeties high, man-to-man -man across the field. And actually, in cover two man, if you run the football, you're the guy. So take a look here. Once he gets outside of this pocket here, if he would decided to run, there was room to run for the first down, not realizing there's a safety high and a cornerback. Interception. Game, set, match. Ranowski back on the field. Hand off Davis. Deshaun Gales. A senior out of Chicago making that huge pick, and he came to South Dakota State as a cornerback, and Jimmy Rogers told us this week they had to teach him how to backpedal. He had no clue how to play corner. He never played the position in his life. Now he's their top corner. He's a lockdown guy. He's a senior, and he's only four minutes and change away from being a national champion. What a job. Mark Mitchin, the name, the defensive coordinator, Jimmy Rogers. Spent half his life in Brookings. Grew up in Arizona. And he talked about how personal this game was to him. South Dakota State, their players and coaches all mentioned that word. Angel Johnson a carry. And then everything really came down to these four quarters and whether or not they could win this first national championship. It had all been building towards this. The playoff appearances, the transition to Division I back in 2004 and methodically advancing deeper and deeper through the last decade. And now here they are. It all comes full circle. And I think we all agree. They didn't sugarcoat it. They said it's personal. You know, we have to beat North Dakota State for this championship. Whoever was in the way, they wanted to do it. Yes, they wanted it to be the Bison. They played with a lot of emotion, and they played extremely hard. And I kind of go back to what Matt... Ince said, head coach for North Dakota State. Remember he told us during the week, he feels that on any level of college football now, it's going to be hard to be as dominant as it was once before. Because of the transfer portal, because of schools moving up, moving down. He knew to sustain the success would be tough. And they were very game. I mean, every other school in the country, you come this far and you lose in the championship game, that's a successful season. But it'll be a pretty tough offseason for the Bison. 
Two losses this year prior to today for NDSU on the road at Arizona. And then to these Jackrabbits, Jaden Price retreating. And just two and a half minutes remain after a 53-yard punt. And don't forget, for the 10th straight year, our Megacast returns tomorrow night when TCU takes on Georgia. CFP National Championship game presented by AT&T. Traditional game call on ESPN, but Megacast has you covered with multiple ways to watch and to listen to the broadcast across all of the ESPN networks, ESPN radio, and wherever you may be. We've got you covered. Skycast, ESPN Deportes, the command center on ESPNU. Can't wait to watch. And uh, the Jackrabbits getting the power aid ready to go. Coach Stig, look out. Be on the lookout. And normally you would say it's a little bit too cold, right? You know, because the temperature dropped a little bit and it's cold here. But you know, these folks are from the Dakotas. I've seen shorts and short sleeve shirts ever since they arrived in town. It's nice and warm down here in Texas. Marshall picks up a gain of five. Nobody cares about the weather at this point if you're from Brookings. Give them an extra couple of yards. Time winding down North Dakota State. Keep it on the ground be the first time the Bison have lost in Frisco. 9-1 and one after today. Won the championship last year. An incredible run. Least for this season comes to a close for NDSU. Left side run picks up two. And a reminder for everybody watching. Fans, you can also check out the ESPN app for the post-game trophy ceremony today. It's immediately following the conclusion. And we look forward to seeing Paul Carcaterra down on the stage. Watching the SDSU fans celebrate for the first time. Verge of winning their national championship. They have coveted that trophy for so long. 11-yard gain for Cam Miller. 90 seconds to go. Man, how about the job by North Dakota State? You know, they're the champs. You know, won so many games and realizing they're not going to win this one. Starting this drive out, just running the football, letting the clock go. Realizing that, you know, this will be South Dakota State's time to shine a little bit. Mathis a hard hit. He continues his good work. Shoved out near the 26. A 17-yard gain. Herter laid the lumber once again. Mathis has been in pain in the second half as well. Approaching a minute to go. You see, that's the running play there I'm talking about. They could have come out, kept throwing the ball, throwing the ball, let's do it, but down by a lot. Showing quality, classy act. Bison with their full complement of timeouts, not utilizing those under a minute to go. A couple of more snaps where this one goes in the books. There's a sack. Reese Winkleman, 6'4 senior, closing out his career, pointing to the ring finger. Well, we always talk about the number of blue jerseys that swarm to the football. If you get by one, he's going to keep coming, but that's just a great individual effort. Kind of the story. Strength of this Jackrabbit team is the defensive line. Their physicality, how they win their battles, and fitting that they get a sack late in this game. Incredible atmosphere. Frisco, gracious host once again. Our production crew working hard all week. Our director, Anthony DeMarco. Our producer, Chris Damiani. Brian Yarrow on site with us this last couple of days. Jay Walker, Paul Carcaterra, Roy Philpott. This has been an incredible experience and even more sensational for SDSU and its fans making the trip some 900 miles south here to Frisco today. It's been great for both sides. And pretty good scene as we see Coach Stig. Get that long-awaited, the ultimate Gatorade bucket for a national championship. But 
I actually just saw him hug the coach that hired him to get into coaching years ago when he was just a student. Cam Miller will buy some time and brought down short of the 15. The power eight on top of Coach Stig. It may be a little chilly, but it feels so good on a day like today. The power eight bucket, get it right. You're right there, but it feels good. But, you know, meeting him was such a quality act. You know, at a certain point, I had to ask myself, when did football come into your life? Right. He was a math teacher and talked about how he loved spending time with his wife, Lori, and their four grandkids. But real interesting character. And that tenure that you see, you don't see tenures go as long as Coach Stiggs has had at South Dakota State. Fourth down. Miller, Mathis, no. And the coverage by Stephen Arell. And that will do it. One more snap for SDSU. Jack Rabbits take over on downs. Victory formation for the Jackrabbits. And that will do it. How sweet it is for South Dakota State. National champions for the first time. Look at the team. You got a heck of a team, too, and it's hard. It's tough, right? Every time. You push it. I know Coach said this. For so many years, it was in the FCS playoffs, North Dakota State for the field. And the Bison would normally win that one, but this year, the field won. The number one team in the country, South Dakota State, got the job done.